a family Santa God and we will praise the name of the Lord. Welcome to this program, Family Santa God. I want to welcome you to watch this program because I know that we are just about to watch the news. And sometimes the news are very, very difficult these days. So when we hear the word of God, it helps us to be able to receive anything else that will come afterwards. And I also would like to welcome you to our meetings every Thursday. We meet here on Cabernet Gardens, 12.30 to 2.30. Please come. Come with a friend, and you will be able to hear personal testimonies. You'll be able to hear the word of God very powerfully, and you'll also be able to see the ministry of home care, how we are taking care of so many uh, children from Kibera, mothers with HIV, AIDS, and dropouts from schools. And you may want to participate in this kind of meeting. But for tonight, I want to continue with uh, our testimony from our sister Esther, where we stopped last week. So Esther, karibu sana. Thank you. Thank you so much. I didn't want us to continue with your story. It was so touching, Esther. And I, I, as I thought about your story, I'm looking at myself as a parent, how I, my husband and I were struggling and trying to take our children to the best schools. And I see your mom doing the same. Here is your dad who has passed on when you are 13 years. And your mom is struggling alone, uh, taking care of three children. And you, in particular, she takes you to Alliance High School, then university. Is it Jomo Kenyatta? Yeah. Jomo Same Kenyatta. Thing, yeah. And what did you do? I did uh, business economics. and then, Business yeah. economics. Then you go to Reeds University in UK, and you come home and you become an alcoholic. I can imagine the pain of your mother. And I also want to commend your mother that she never shouted at you. She never went to other people. She never even went to prayer meetings and saying, pray for my daughter with such an alcoholic. I fear I've wasted my money. That the, your, ma, your mama, your mother has a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful spirit. And I pray that one of these days I'll meet her to just tell her, thank you for not disturbing Esther. But let's pick this story from where we stopped Esther. Now you have become an alcoholic. You are, you are in the rehab. Now, can you pick that story from there? How did you leave the rehab? I struggled with the alcohol for five years. Mm -hmm. And when I eventually started getting the blackouts, I knew that there was something wrong. Mm. So I reached out to my sister and my sister found a rehab for me. Mm. When I was going to the rehab, I really didn't even know what rehabs were. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of also stigmatizing of you don't go shouting that you're going to rehab. Yeah, and I didn't even know what I was going to find there. Mm. But I was willing to do anything to get some help. At that point, for sure, I knew I needed help. Mm. So I went to the rehab, and the rehab was, uh, I had to be there for 90 days. Mm -hmm. uh, they were running a spiritual program. Mm. Uh, and spiritual program in the sense that um, at the end of the day, I think you're spiritually sick. You have no sense of purpose, no sense of belief. Mm -hmm. You don't believe in anything. And uh, the alcohol is just making it worse. So then they started talking about God in this spiritual program. And to me, I said, no, 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 no. You can't start talking about God. I just want to get well. I thought actually they even give you medication so mm. that now you can be <laughs> calm, normal, and behave yeah. like a normal human being. Yeah. But I was told the only solution mm. I don't is want to, completely... to talk about God. Where was God when my husband yes, died? Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to hear that. But then something just told me, what choice do I have? Let me just listen. I need help. For one thing, I did not deny I needed help. And so I listened mm. and I said, you know what? I will do everything that this program tells me to do. Mm. Uh, if it means looking for that support group after the 90 days, if it means meeting other people who mm -hmm. are like me, if it means uh, getting to know uh, the spiritual side of this program, it is fine. Mm -hmm. And the program also helped me to deal. It brought out the issue of the grief. And you'd have a, mm -hmm. a counselor. Mm -hmm. each, person, each client always had a counselor. And you'd have one-on-one -on -one sessions where you'd be able to discuss, how did you reach here? And by the time you're seeing your story, the counselor knows how to help you. Uh -huh. So it now stops becoming about the alcohol in itself, but about now your well-being. Mm. 
Mm-hmm. So and and all holistic from the physical side. By the time I was entering rehab, I was forty five kgs. I was like a high school oh girl. Oh my goodness, that's a skeleton. So we, yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, so they deal with your physical, they mm-hmm. deal with your mental, they mm-hmm. deal with your emotional well being, they deal with your social in mm-hmm. terms of the relationships. How do are you going to mend mm-hmm. your relationships? Mm-hmm. They also deal with the spiritual aspect. Mm-hmm. So it's all rounded. At this point, when you are struggling. Uh, even before you go to the rehab, did you find some Christians that were coming to you and uh, giving you their own <laughs> opinion? Yes. And how you can get out of there? Yes. Mm-hmm. But I used to, many, uh, one or two tried to pray for me. Mm-hmm. Another one tried to introduce me to BSF. And the funny thing is that now I am in BSF many mm-hmm. years later. <laughs> and I said, no, this, I don't even know what they're trying to do because in my mind, mm-hmm. I knew God is a loving God. Mm. So as far as I'm concerned, if God loved me so much, why am I suffering like this? So don't pray for me. Mm. I didn't want to hear. Mm. So they would pray, pray, pray. But for me, it was not making sense. Mm-hmm. I also had some neighbors some time, um, where I, used, I had isolated and moved away. And one time I was coming to where I was staying and the, the neighbors had a prayer meeting mm-hmm. and I could hear them praying about me. So I said, are people oh, losing their goodness. mind? Yeah. So I, well, you mean I'm that bad that even my neighbors <laughs> <laughs> are, are praying for, for me? me. But mm-hmm. when I think about it, maybe those prayers were answered. Mm. So um, the rehab helped me to, to find myself, mm-hmm. to understand that I was sick, to mm-hmm. understand the nature of alcoholism, mm-hmm. to understand about the other issues. Mm-hmm. And what I picked out from it, also the spiritual angle, is that at the end of the day, you need God. Amen. Yes, you need to go through all these things to help you mm-hmm. with your addiction, mm-hmm. but bottom line, mm-hmm. you need God. Mm-hmm. So when I came out of rehab, in my mind, mm-hmm. I said, first of all, I can't believe I have I've stayed for 90 days. I've managed to finish 90 days. Mm-hmm. I'm feeling good with myself. I had gained weight. I was looking healthy. I was feeling nice. My mind was clear. Mm-hmm. And so in my mind, I said, no, let me look for, let me go to church and just to say thank you God Amen. and to pray that I thank hope you it, for, yeah, for, for healing you yeah for these 90 days thank you and I pray that it may continue I don't know how but that was my prayer when mm. I went to church mm. and when I started going to church uh, because the program was spiritual I the someone started making sense mm-hmm. to me mm-hmm. in my situation mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. and so I kept going and going mm-hmm. and going mm. and then I, I i plugged into the church mm. and they had a program that they were doing i for me mm. i was trying to know god more because now i understood god had helped me get out of the darkness amen. i had come i had come amen. from and it was my way of saying i'm grateful to god so let me know this god more. So that I know who I'm yes, knowing. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and who has done all this wonderful mm-hmm. for me. So in fact, we always used to say, but by the grace of God that mm-hmm. I'm sober today. Mm. And so that's how I got involved with with church. Did the, some, I, I go to Karura Community Chapel. Mm. Um, they have uh, some programs that you do to get to know about the church and everything. Mm. And in that process, mm. I just said, this is just making sense to me. Mm. I cannot live my life without God. Amen. And so that's when I said, you know, I just give my life um, to God. And mm-hmm. and it has been a journey of one day at a time. Mm-hmm. Um, when I was sh- this? When was this? This was maybe in 2013. Mm-hmm. Yeah, 2013. Oh, about five years ago. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. 2013, mm-hmm. 2014. Mm-hmm. Um, after now, becoming regular going to church understanding mm. um um we had this we all have these small groups in church so mm. you you meet at people's houses depending on your group i mm-hmm. got to meet other christians yes um, now not groups of people who have been uh, alcoholics no, but yeah uh, now just ordinary yeah, groups ordinary mm-hmm. the church groups uh, mm-hmm. that they have mm. and uh and slowly got involved in those groups and in fact now I serve a lot at Karura in different ministries. Mm -hmm. Um, I get opportunities to be a speaker at uh, 
at uh, different churches, mm -hmm. just sharing my story and mm -hmm. also encouraging mm -hmm. um, those who have people who are suffering mm -hmm. from, from alcoholism or mm -hmm. depression and all that. Mm -hmm. um, and even speaking to young people mm -hmm. to be to create awareness mm -hmm. about the dangers of alcohol and drugs because there's both sides to it. Mm -hmm. There are those who have people who are suffering and they don't know what to do, mm -hmm. but there are also those who, are, those who have not yet been in it, but you're creating awareness so that mm -hmm. if they come mm -hmm. across it, they make the wise choice that you know they know what are the dangers of alcohol and drugs and okay now days. you talk about uh, alcoholism and de depression interchangeably yes do they come together at the same time or did you realize you are depressed and then this led to alcoholism or you you are alcoholic and that led to depression I I believe I was depressed mm -hmm. because I, I just felt a sense of hopelessness mm -hmm. and helpless mm -hmm. and not wanting nothing in life meant mm -hmm. anything. And in that process, mm -hmm. when I discovered alcohol, the alcohol was now hiding mm -hmm. those feelings. Mm -hmm. It was now, so when I'm drinking, I'm not feeling the helplessness in mm -hmm. the beginning mm -hmm. or the hopelessness. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the depression mm -hmm. for me led to the alcoholism. Mm -hmm. The more depressed I was, the more I drank, the more. Now, then, of course, again, the drinking catches up with you and increases the depression. So now you, oh it's, my it's goodness, all back it becomes forth. such a vicious just, cycle. Yes, it's a vicious cycle. Yeah, mm -hmm. because now again, you reach a point where mm. you can't do without it and mm. you also don't want it. Oh, I feel so sorry. Now, um, talk to some Christians that in their nice uh, and good naturedness and they want to reach out to somebody whom they know she's suffering, she's an alcoholic, she's depressed, have talked to, either they talk to you or they talk to other people. What are some of the things they should not tell an alcoholic or a depressed person? Um, I think it's coming from a self-righteous mm. point of view mm -hmm. that I'm the alcoholic mm. and it's a moral thing and it's wrong and I'm bad and you have sinned and you're terrible mm. so giving me and you who is talking to me mm. you are fine you are all together and mm. everything mm. and so you're stigmatizing me mm. and thinking also that if I the only thing I need to do for you is pray mm. for you and you'll be fine mm. no so if I come to you and say, Esther, hallelujah, when I see fear, let me pray for you. And if I'm, even I'm spirit filled and I speak, start praying in tongues, uh, that's not the way to approach the, this whole thing. The alcoholic is already going through so much. Yes, you can pray for them. Keep praying for them. I'm mm. sure many people prayed for me. Mm. But the best way to reach that alcoholic is another alcoholic. Mm. Is a profession, not a profession, someone who's gone through it mm. or a professional who has dealt with alcoholics mm. because then they can empathize with them. That person will listen. Mm. The God factor always comes. It came. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It came because yes. you slowly realize at mm. the end of the day, actually what I've just gone mm. through, mm. I couldn't have done, Be I could not be here if it wasn't for God. Mm. But if you came and told me you need God, Esther, so that you'll sober up, I, you are not, it's not making sense. I'm mm -hmm. not in that mm. place. Mm. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I could understand why in, in a sense, the say the program in the rehab is a spiritual program mm. because you start to slowly understand yourself. This person needs to first understand mm. that they they are sick mm. and they can get help mm. and they are still loved. Amen. We always try to think that that alcoholic is the one who is in the ditch and we are not supposed to talk to them mm. and I'm too embarrassed to be seen with them. Mm. How can I start talking to them and me, I'm okay. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I also would like to pick something that you said, that this rehab, they thought about the, uh, the God factor, among the other things, because it's not every rehab that uh, talks about the God factor. And so I'd like to say to those that are watching that if you're looking for rehab and you're a Christian, look for one that has the God factor. I really like that, because that is why you pray 
or they are, they are praying for you even if you don't know. And I think that really, really helped you in coming out. Now, Esther, I understand that you're trying to, to have an organization that will be helping alcoholics. Tell us uh, about that. Um, so after, uh, in the past few years that I, I've uh, been sober, what has happened whenever I speak, uh, I share my story, mm -hmm. um, lots of women and parents or people call me afterwards to ask me for help. Like, I have a son who's going through this. Mm. Esther, how can you help me? And I've helped several people over the years. It could be somebody's husband. It mm. could be somebody's child. It could be a sister. It could be a brother. Mm. I, I try to connect them, talk to them, refer them to a rehab, or even refer them to some counselor, depending on the situation mm. that they are in. And so I thought to myself, mm. I think there are very many people suffering out there, especially women, who feel helpless because mm. I could imagine my mother wanted to help but she didn't know how to help mm. or who to go to to mm. help me mm. and so women need to I, I I thought that if I started an organization that creates a safe space for women to come and say this is my issue how can you help and they're directed to how they get the help mm. instead of suffering on their own mm. so i'm um, starting an organization called nina gina foundation mm. for women uh, which looks at the physical mm. mental spiritual and social wellness of women who go through so many things depression mental alcoholism and it may not be even them themselves but even because of the fa the, the they are loved ones mm. and so to be able to create a safe space mm. that they can be able to know yes i can discuss here mm -hmm and say what my problem is mm -hmm. and be able to get the help I need. Mm. But also the other thing that the organization will be doing is to hold women's retreats. Women tend to cover themselves. Mm. So you see me in church on Sunday, mm -hmm. I'm smart, mm -hmm. I, love, I talk You're to you, together. I'm all together. Mm. But deep inside, I'm really struggling, I'm really suffering. And so the retreat is a way of self-awareness. Mm. Women play very many roles you're a wife you're a mother you're you're an employer or you're an employee we care take a lot of people a, mm. and a lot of things mm. but if somebody asks you do you feel stuck who are you mm. it's a very hard question to answer from mm. a woman's perspective because mm. you're always playing some role but who is esther mm. aside from being a mother aside from being a sister who is esther mm -hmm. how can we help women remove those covers Mm -hmm. to be able to find themselves mm. so that they can be the authentic they can be themselves mm. that you're proud to say yes now i know who i am mm. yeah and also the covers to be able to deal we have a lot of past issues mm -hmm. things that we went through that we're not willing to forgive dealing with forgiveness mm. dealing with depression mm -hmm. trying to grow emotionally mm -hmm. dealing with grief dealing with trauma so basically the retreats are about women coming to find mm. themselves we'll have different themes for the different retreats mm. uh, uh the retreats with, with uh, will either be one day retreats mm. or residential retreats mm. um and focused on the wellness of women mm. yeah oh, that because is at great. the end of the day mm -hmm. a healthy woman is mm. a healthy family is a healthy Mm. Mm. Yeah. In fact, I wanted to ask you that. Did you say women? So this is going specific to be specifically for women alone, no men. For now, it is specifically <laughs> for women. I'm trying to use my own experience. Uh, but the women indirectly will be helping the men. Mm. Because that woman who's coming and saying, my mm. son, mm. that woman who's coming to say, my husband, mm. that woman who's coming to say, my brother, mm. yeah? Mm. So if she is well, mm. she's able to help mm. the others. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, you are in the process of uh, having the organization done. It's not completely done. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're in the process of uh, completing the the registration, uh, but we will start with the one day retreats mm -hmm. and the residential retreats, mm -hmm. so that people can be aware mm -hmm. and know that definitely people need help. Yeah. I also have a lot of people I have helped who mm -hmm. will be able mm -hmm. to share their experiences and their stories, mm -hmm. like you asked to do with you mm -hmm. so that women can know yes yes there is hope mm. and we can be able to 
deal with the issues that we go through on so a day-to-day -day basis. So already you've been helping some people on a one-to-one -one basis, Kaido? Yes, mm -hmm. I've been doing it for the last five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so someone will call me and mm -hmm. say, uh, please meet my son, I meet the son, I mm. find out what the issue is, mm. I walk with the son, I walk with the mom. Sometimes it's not easy, mm. uh, the son doesn't follow through, the mom says I'm tired, but mm. I encourage her, mm. and at the end of the day, there I have very many happy stories mm. of people I have worked with, and mm -hmm. I felt that um, these people knew, got to me because they had something about me. Mm. But then if I make it through the organization, it opens up for more people through mm. the retreats, through mm. the things that we do, mm. um, for these women to be able to come and get help. Mm. Yeah. Tell us one of, or two of the ha happy stories so that people will be <laughs> uh, encouraged. Um, my One of the happy stories I have is of uh, this lady and mm -hmm. um, she was working with a friend of mine whom we go to church with. Mm -hmm. And of course, my friend in church had heard my story. And so as they are working, see, the lady was telling her, oh, I really don't know what to do about my son. I'm so tired. I'm fed up. Mm -hmm. And so she said, why don't you call my friend Esther? So she called me and she said, I was referred to you. Can mm -hmm. I have a chat with you? So mm. she came to my office mm -hmm. um, and we had a chat and she told me, I don't know what to do. And she looked helpless, mm. tired, Hopeless. fed up. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So I shared my own story mm. with her mm. and I told her it is indeed possible mm. to get help mm. if he's willing to listen. Mm. Um, and I said, you, sh she will, she will, he will not listen to you. Mm. So you just tell him to make an appointment to come and see me mm. and I'll see him me one on one. And I saw him and I mm. sat with him mm. and I, uh, uh, I talked about myself, my story. Mm. And he started saying, really, you don't look it. And then I said, yes, it is possible to get help. And he slowly opened up. Mm -hmm. So I started working. I went, I called back the mom and I said, um, it is okay, I'll continue. I can be able to work with him. We have agreed on a plan. Mm. He can meet me once a week. Mm. Uh, we see how to get help. If his situation becomes worse, mm. um, I have told him I will recommend that he goes to rehab. Mm. But this, this his, her son worked with me diligently and listened to what I had to say mm. and did what I suggested that he should do. Mm. He had dropped out of school. He's now gone back to school. Mm -hmm. He went back to university. He's finished. Amen. He has one more paper to do. Mm. Um, I talked to the, I talked to the mother. The mother said, "God bless you. God bless you. I'm very fine. We are very okay." And you see now, when I look at the joy in both of them, mm. and I compare that first meeting I had with each one of them separately, mm. Mm. these people have been. Then you're saying it's worth it. Yeah, it is worth it. To I know share. we will not have the time for the yeah. second story. Because there's one or more, two questions I would like to ask you before we finish. But are there charges to it when to you the, are taking people through? Um, I think for me, it's mm. more so, that is why the foundation comes in. Mm. Because if the foundation is able to have funding, then you're helping for that initial session when you come to see us. Mm -hmm. But when you're now referred to some professional, mm -hmm. you will go and pay those fees. Mm -hmm. So if you've come to us and I've had a session with you and all that mm -hmm. and discovered that maybe for you, you need to see a psychologist, maybe for you, you need to see a counselor, mm -hmm. that counselor we partner with, the foundation will partner with various mm -hmm. professionals. Mm -hmm. That partner we, you, we refer you to, mm -hmm. you will need to mm -hmm. pay them because you're getting professional mm. help. Mm. But obviously, as we grow, these partners will also be willing not to mm. charge maybe their normal fees, mm. but basically it's providing the platform yes. of where yes. do I obviously, go. Obviously, there are yeah. some things that need yes, to be paid there, for. So there are things that need mm -hmm. to be mm. paid for. Mm. Yeah. Would you like to conclude with the caregiver? What, what, what encouragement would you like us to give to the caregiver? They should, be, they should show love mm -hmm. and compassion to those people and not to give up. There's the verse that comes to mind about not giving up and hope, which always plays in my head all the time, I think is, um, is it Isaiah 41, 10? Uh, Do not be afraid, I am, you are my God. Mm. Do not be dismayed, yeah. I will always be, be with, with you. you. Mm. I will help you, I mm. will strengthen you, mm. I will uphold you with, with my, my righteous, righteous right hand. hand. Uh -huh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, that there's always hope. Mm. 
Let's pray for all those that are alcoholics tonight. Please pray. Dear Lord, thank you for giving me the opportunity to share my story. Um, I pray for all the families out there who may have loved ones who have who are still going through alcoholism and wondering what to do. God, I pray that you open their hearts that they can be you can give them hope that the end it is not the end, that they just need to keep trusting that and being supportive to their loved ones. Um, I want to pray also for those who are still suffering themselves and have no understanding of what is going through with them. God, may you keep reaching to them, that they may see your hand, that they may see that there is hope, that they may listen to others who have been through the same thing, that they may be able to see that it's not helpless, it's not the end they can be able to get out about all those issues that they are going through. God, may you always be with all the families. May you always be with those who are still suffering. May you show your strength, show your power, show your love, and show your compassion. May we be more compassionate to these people. May we not tarnish them away when they come to us from help. May we not stigmatize them. Give us that love that you have shown us through your son, Jesus, that we may be able to show the same compassion, the same love to all the people around us. We are all sinners, but Jesus died for us, and you are able to do for us amazingly. You are, uh, you are the um, beginning and the end, and we just need to have that hope, that love, that strength, that compassion to be like your son Jesus, to be able to help others. And I thank you, God, for the opportunity, and I pray for Reverend Judy for giving us the platform to talk about how we can be able to help other people. Um, I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe you have been blessed by Esther's testimony because God allows us to go through tests so that we can become a blessing to other people. I pray that you are becoming a blessing uh, because of the things that you are going through. And I also want to pray that God will help you and your family, especially those who are struggling with depression and alcoholism in the family. May God really come your way. Please, if you need to call us, call us on any numbers that are on the screen, and we know that God is going to bless you. I would like you to know we are here Cabernet Gardens every Thursday, 12.30 to 2.30. Please come. You are most welcome. You hear testimonies like that one of Esther and many, many others that are going to be a blessing. May God bless you. Have a wonderful, wonderful uh, week. Esther, God bless you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Yeah. Thanks. Amen. <laughs> Thank you so much for choosing the Home Care Retreat Center a place of serenity, a place of dignity, and a place of building your spirituality. We are so privileged to host you, and if you're looking for the directions coming from the current roundabout, you pass the Africa International University, and the immediate first left turn, you find that is Rhino Park Road. Go up that road, and before you get to the Resurrection Garden, you will find our premises, Home Care Retreat Center. Excited staff, serene environment, large grounds for your prayer, a place of serenity, a place of dignity, and a place of building your spirituality. Quality executive rooms to host you. God bless you, and see you there. Hakuna mwingine kama wewe jo wa shamani